Welcome to today's live makeover. Today we're going to be talking all about foundation and skin, how to get your very best flawless finish. So all my tips for skin prep, how I do foundation, what I choose, concealers, things like that. So we've started with the eyes done. So this is Melinda. She is the cutest. So she actually <laughs> subscribes to my channel and she messaged me and wanted to come be a model. So I'm so excited to have her today. She's adorable. We've already been having so much fun. <laughs> So we're gonna go ahead and get right into skin prep today. So first thing I like to do is make sure it's clean. So I'm gonna be using some micellar water today. So I just have little cotton pads and I buy the big one with the pump and you just press down and I'm gonna get it just on my little cotton pad. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and swipe her skin. Just make sure we don't have any residue or anything like that. And I'm just gonna avoid the eye area because we already have makeup there. So once I get it all clean, I like to exfoliate. So Melinda already has amazing skin, but I really like to do a bit of exfoliation just to get that perfect flawless finish. The foundation will lay so great when I do that. And it also helps your moisturizing products to be able to sink in deeper in your skin and give you a little bit more hydration. Sometimes if we don't exfoliate regularly, the products we put on on top don't really fully get absorbed so you're not getting the benefits from them okay so now I'm going to use this exfoliating product this is sex appeal by Sonia Roselli I really love this you guys have seen me use this before so I just squirt it on my hands and I'm just gonna really lightly blend it downward on Melinda's perfect skin Producer Kelly was obsessed with Melinda's skin because she can see it in the camera when she's setting up. She's like, Melinda, what do you do? And you said sunscreen is your skin tip, right? Yeah. Yep. Super goop. Super goop. I know she's a super goop. That's my favorite sunscreen. It works so good. You really do. You have just great skin. That's okay. It's all off. So this is a super gentle exfoliant. That's why I can do it with her in my chair here. She doesn't need to go to the sink. It doesn't, it's a liquid. So when you spray it on your hand, it doesn't have little exfoliating beads or anything like that. It's just a liquid. It feels really soft and it just kind of balls up as you use the product. It almost feels like your skin is balling up with it, um, but it's just the product gently exfoliating your skin. Do you exfoliate? No, <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> I want to shave my face one of these days. Can we do it today? Sure. Okay, we're going to do it. We'll do that next. Okay. So she sees my little um, facial razor. I'll put it in front of the camera. Let's see. On my little table. Okay, I'll put it by the lipstick. So this little razor is a facial razor. I've used this a couple times. I've talked about it in my videos, but I don't know if I've ever demoed it on a video. So we'll demo it on Melinda today. Sure. They are amazing. Okay, so now we are going to remove that. So what I like to do is again use that micellar water and a little cotton pad. And this is how I take off the product. Mm -hmm. So I'm just gonna hold this towel under her so I don't get anything on her cute shirt. But this is so awesome. I just, this is my favorite exfoliator I've used because it's so very gentle. Sometimes things can be harsh, especially when I'm working on people where I don't know what their skin is like. I don't know how it will react. I don't want any reactions, uh, but it makes it super smooth. How does it feel? It feels nice. Good. I mean, it's not stinging or anything. Yeah, it's very gentle. This whole line is formulated with all skin types in mind, and so they're very mindful of skin being sensitive or things like that. So I do everything downward. If we have any little hairs on the face, which all of us do, unless you use the facial razor that I'm going to show you, um, this product will get caught up in the little hairs. So I like to do it in a downward motion, and that's how I take it off too. I'm excited to show you guys the little tinkle razor because I I've talked about it sometimes because these videos are live. So sometimes when we get questions about skin, 
they'll ask about that and I've explained it but I've never shown it before so this will be fun yeah. you'll be an addict I'll send you home because I use the new one on everyone so this is a new one so I'll remind me and I'll give it to you okay you can use it a couple times okay so once all that product is off um we're gonna do we're gonna shape the face a little bit yeah. so if you're doing the sex appeal on yourself the exfoliant you can just rinse it in the sink but since I'm doing it on her we'll just do it this way okay so this is a tinkle razor these are from Amazon so these are um, designs for the face so um, they're very gentle the hair does not grow back thicker so what we're gonna do is usually I focus on the upper lip with people and a little bit of the chin that's where almost all women have a little bit of hair and then all of us also have this peach fuzz on the cheek and so I'll probably lightly do that area so what I like to do is um, pull the skin so it tightens up a little bit and you're just gonna go in a little downward motion and you're just gonna be very very gentle you're not applying much pressure at all this razor they come fairly sharp they do a really good job they don't irritate the skin and there you go show you the little the little yeah. hairs <laughs> that's so awesome it's magic yeah. but it's so fast and I love that you don't have to worry about it growing back thicker and I prefer this to waxing I and it might just be because I have sensitive skin when I wax I feel like it always gets a little bit of the layer of my skin and I just don't like that on the face I feel like we need to be gentle to the skin to keep it from aging and always looking good and the facial razor is very very gentle so you can do this like once a week or just always downward and just very very gentle so you're not coming at the skin this way you're holding it at an angle like a 45 oh, degree okay. angle I'd say probably less and you're just lately gonna do these little areas it's really great skin's gonna feel like baby baby smooth when we're done okay we will do a little bit on the cheeks just slightly maybe just right down that area so this is helpful if you do like to wear foundation or tinted moisturizer it just makes it lay really 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 smooth because we don't have can you see the cute little baby hairs oh, yeah. <laughs> it's you can't see them usually until you're in the sun or you apply foundation it just looks um just a little textured so this will make your skin look crazy crazy smooth so again just try to do i'm just doing little swipes instead of one big swipe because i feel like that allows you to keep the same pressure the whole time but i'm just doing one pass if i miss a couple hairs that's okay especially because we just exfoliated I don't want to um, be really rough with her skin. I want to be very gentle. So next we're gonna use, um, this is called Water Elixir. So this is a liquid hydrator. So this is really, really great to use after the exfoliant because we really prepared your skin to soak up anything you put on it. And this is very calming and it's very hydrating, but it's a liquid so it doesn't leave any thick residue. So I like to just put this everywhere go down the neck a little bit so you can feel like it'll absorb completely but you can just feel your skin feel so much more hydrated less thirsty this is a great product if you um, wear foundation and you feel like your foundation tends to separate throughout the day or get a little bit of flaky or a little patchy sometimes that means that your skin barrier is compromised and it's just um, it's been stripped or it's just hasn't been properly exfoliating and the combo of these two products it tends to fix that usually for people i can turn the collar in if that helps you're okay i'm just lightly going on your yeah. neck but yeah maybe that side great so already her skin looks very hydrated it looks very glowy we are going to do a third product. So I'm gonna use a moisturizer on her. This one is called Water Balm. So I'm just gonna scoop it out with a little spatula. This is my favorite. This is what I generally use in place of primer because it's super, super hydrating. And it also is very lightweight. So what I look for in a moisturizer for 
day wear under foundation is I want something that really packs a punch that will give the skin a lot of hydration, a good amount of moisture, but that's gonna be very, very thin. I don't wanna add texture under the foundation. And this one creates a really flawless finish, so foundation lays really, really great on top of it. And I like to use it as an eye cream as well. Just tap it in under, under the skin. So for Melinda's brows and eyes today, we have a before video, so we can flash that before we did her eyes so you guys can see. So I used the Anastasia brow pencil in the shade Blonde. So I used Blonde because it, it has a warmer undertone and I felt like it would match some of the more strawberry tones in her pretty hair. Is that what, what color would you call your hair? Would you say blonde or like a strawberry blonde? Uh, it's more, It was a supposed to be blonde. Yeah. It I is, was blonde when I was a kid. Were and, you? And it got darker and then it looked like mouse color. Oh, it lost its like bright, yeah. bright blonde. And there's, it's pretty rare when an adult will keep that like really bright little kid blonde. Well, there was a girl that I worked with that had like white blonde hair. Mm -hmm. She, you know, almost like albino hair. Wow. And she did not dye it? No. Okay. It was just natural. Yeah. Yeah. That's super rare. I had a friend. She was from Sweden though. I think there's a lot yeah. of blondes there and she had very long blonde hair. It looked highlighted. And she was always like, should I color it? And we're like, of course, no. Are like you kidding? people pay to get your <laughs> hair color. Do not yeah. color it. Okay, so her skin, how does it feel, Melinda? It feels nice. Does it feel good? Yeah. You can probably tell on camera, it just looks really reflective, it looks really glowy. It feels amazing. So I love to feel people's skin um, as I'm prepping them to kind of see what we're working with, and I love the difference before just all this hydration. Her skin just feels very healthy and plump. Okay. Oh, hello, Tammy. She says, good morning, finally caught you live again. So happy you're here, <laughs> welcome. So if you guys have any questions, we're live, so you can drop those, and at different points, I'll try to check. Okay, so let's get into foundation for Melinda. So she usually wears a tinted moisturizer, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're going to do a little bit more full coverage today. We're going to do a medium coverage, but I'm going to show you some ways to thin it out to keep it looking as natural as possible. So we are going to use NARS foundation on her today. So this is... We're going to do two shades. So she matched um, the shade light three, but it was like a tad bit. I don't want her to look washed out, so I'm going to add a little bit of shade light 0.45. So I'm just going to mix them in my little palette. I'll do two pumps of the light. Let's do three pumps of light and one pump of the darker shade. Okay. The darker shade has a little bit more warmth, just gives it a little bit more punch. When you're doing more of a, like a medium full coverage foundation, um, sometimes it just, they will look washed out. Even if you match their skin perfectly, sometimes it will just look a little washed out um, if you don't have a little bit of warmth in it. Just because our skin naturally has so many color variations, most of us are lighter on our neck, sometimes we're more tan on our forehead. Nobody's skin is one color and a foundation is one color. So when you go to put it on, it looks a little bit, um, a little bit harsh I've noticed especially on more fair skin almost like a mask <laughs> yeah yeah it does that's what gives it that mask look okay so I I love with this foundation with the NARS foundation I love to do it with a, a brush um, any other way I've used it I don't like the coverage I get but it works really great with a blush so I'm using absolutely minimal product even though I did four pumps of foundation I'm not going to use it all that's just what I use to get the correct ratios that I wanted so I'm going in with a brush and just slightly, I'm doing like press swirl motion. So I'm doing more pressing instead of swiping around. I don't want to disrupt her skin. So I'm just doing little, little baby presses. And then what I also like to do is I like to use a damp beauty blender or beauty sponge. And I just like to go over the area I've worked on. And I like to do this area by area this is going to give you the most flawless finish. It takes a little bit more time, but what you're doing is you're actually able to work with the foundation before it um, sets, basically, before it mattifies a little bit. So that's great to do. If I was to do her whole foundation and then go in with the Beauty Blender, 
it would um, add a little bit of texture. So I like to do the blush beauty blender combo when I'm going for like super natural. Foundation just is gonna add texture to your face, but this method, it's super, super minimal, especially with really great skin like Melinda's. It's just looking airbrushed, like super flawless. You can probably see in camera, it really just looks like her skin right now. It doesn't look like a mask. So Melinda used to work at Disneyland, which is my favorite place. And she told me she is one year older than Disneyland, which I just think is the <laughs> coolest thing in the whole world. And you grew up going and stuff like that, right? Mm -hmm. She's, yes. That's so cool. She said her dad would take her every time a ride opened. What's your favorite? So having worked there, having grown up and seen all the rides, I'm sure there's nostalgia. What is like the best ride? Well, I like Pirates of the Caribbean. Such a good one. And Big Thunder Mountain. And I like Star Tours because that's fun. That is fun. And that you worked on that one a little bit, right? Yeah. Yeah. So and fun. some of the rides that aren't there anymore. I like the merry-go-round in Fantasyland. That's fun. In Fantasyland. Is that, um, they only have one merry-go-round, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. That one, I was watching some video, facts video on YouTube, and they said that's like, the oldest merry-go-round merry in the U.S. Like, they took it from, like, a really old state fair or something like that. Mm -hmm. Is that true? <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I don't know. <laughs> That's cool. It's a cool merry-go-round. What's, like, a Disney secret you learned working at the park that a lot of people may not know? There's a basketball court in... Um, the Matterhorn. Is there really? Mm -hmm. There really is. I heard mm -hmm. about that, but I didn't know if it was true. Yeah. That's amazing. Did you ever see it? Uh-huh. That's so cool. Did you play basketball? Well, the basketball was kind of dead, but oh. yeah, we tried. <laughs> <laughs> Do they not keep up on the court? No. Like it was like an old ball? Yeah. That's so funny. That's so cool. All right, so I my beauty blender rolled into my foundation, so I'm just using this side with not very much on it. And you have to have it wet for this technique. So basically what it's doing is it's just thinning out the foundation slightly. So it's really pressing it into her skin. It's getting that great airbrush finish. And the sponge is actually absorbing a little bit of the foundation, which I love because then it's going to look really, really smooth. I want it to absorb any excess because you only need that little bit of coverage. Okay, so what I'm gonna do for the nose is just really get in these little crevices. I like to squeeze the sponge, the little point of it, and just get around there. Put a little bit of that. And a lot of times the beauty sponge will work better on the nose anyways than a brush, just depending. All right, that was looking great. Okay, let's do um, some under eye concealer. So I think on Melinda today, we're gonna use the NARS. Um, I pulled cream brulee and vanilla for her. I'm gonna start with vanilla. It's a very light shade. Do you watch a lot of YouTube videos, Melinda? Yeah. Who are your favorites? Well, there's yours and no. there's <laughs> Melania's and I watch cooking ones. They make me hungry. <laughs> yes, I love cooking ones too. Who do you like to watch or what type of cooking do you like? Oh, you know, I, I'm kind of old school. I use a pressure cooker and a cast iron skillets and I do pot roasts and mac and cheese and oh, tasty. Yeah, soup. Sounds gonna make me hungry. <laughs> <That> sounds so <laughs> good. 
I could tell you liked YouTube videos because when we were doing her eyes before we started, she's like, oh, I use this product. She's like giving recommendations to producer Kelly and they were good ones. I'm like, Melinda knows her stuff. She knows what's up. Okay, so with the concealer, go ahead and look up for me. What I'm doing is I, again, am taking the thinnest amount of very thin layer. I'm using a um, soft little kabuki brush and I'm just lightly pressing and swirling under the eye area. So these techniques are really great as we transition into summer because you can use your same products. A lot of people like more full coverage in the winter and spring, and then as we get in the summer, we want it to be really light. So if you still like more of a glam look, like you still wanna use all your products, if you change the way you apply them and you use some of these techniques, you can get a completely different finish and they just wear really, really well. The less makeup you use, the better it's actually gonna wear throughout the day. A little bit of fall under her eyes. My stomach is growling. You made me hungry with all your food. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> gonna have to have a delicious lunch after you leave. Okay, go ahead and look up for me. I'm just gonna clean up under this eye area slightly. I used a gel liner on Melinda and I tight lined it a lot of times with that. Sometimes the color will travel down a little bit, so you just have to keep an eye on it. Okay, I'm going to check the comments. Oh, hi, Laura. She says, when prepping the skin, is it best to use all the same line to get the best results, or does that not matter? That's a really great question. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, overall, it doesn't matter. You can learn what products play well together if you have your favorites. But I actually do love using the same line because they're usually meant to build upon each other. So in my little skincare bag, I have Sonia Roselli's full line, and I do tend to just use all of those because they layer so well. And I can address multiple problems with them without worrying if the products are gonna play well together. You don't have to do experimenting. And I've noticed that for my own skincare regimen too. My skin looks the best if I use the full a full line of something. So my friend, my really good friend's an esthetician and I get my facials from her. And I just started, I'm like, okay, I'll buy your line, tell me what to get. And it really works better that way. So it does. And my favorite thing about using the same line is just that you don't have to experiment. Sometimes it takes so many days of layering products and you're like, okay, which one is causing the problem? So it does help. Okay, so what I am doing now, I'm just setting her under eyes with this um, flat brush. So this had a teeny, teeny bit of setting powder on it that I used to set her lids with. It's translucent. So I'm actually not applying new product to the brush. I'm just using what is left on there and I'm lightly setting under her eyes, just so she doesn't get any creases. But I don't really want to add a lot of product. Okay, so I like to set the under eyes right away, oftentimes, so that it doesn't crease. And then we're gonna go ahead and do a little bit of contouring on her. We'll do some powder contour on her and we'll do a liquid blush. So we're gonna use, um, let's do this one. Let's do some rosy tones on you today. So this is NARS blush. This is the shade Orgasm. I, <laughs> I did my mom's makeup on Monday last week, and I used the shade, and I think I made her uncomfortable because I said the shade. <laughs> Sorry, Mom. <laughs> okay, so we're just going to put this, like, on the apples of her cheek, uh, a little bit above the apples, actually. What tones do you tend to like? So you said you do a blush every day, right? Yeah. What I, do you, I, do you I, like? I like kind of the pinky, mauve kind of blush. Perfect. So this one is like a rose. It's probably a little mm. bit brighter. It doesn't. It's not really mauve. It's more of like a golden rose. Mm. This will be fun to try. So this I love. I just do it with my fingers. My fingers will get the best finish. So I'm just tapping it in, giving her some color is super pretty. What color lips do you usually go with? Kind of like a mauvey pink too? Yeah. Okay, 
So that is looking super beautiful. And we can layer this if we want to change the tone a little bit. We can add a powder blush on top. But this gives you the best finish. I love a liquid blush. Um, oh, my mom is watching. Good morning, beautiful Julie. Hello. Your mom is such a pretty lady. I'm excited to see this end result. Oh, my mom, you're the cutest. Oh, thank, thank you for you. watching <laughs> and she is so beautiful i'm so happy you're modeling today this is fun okay let's do so this is the hula bronzer i love this shade we're going to do just a little bit of contouring today okay let's use this brush And do you um, tend to get oily at all? No. Are you more pretty balanced? I'm, I think my skin is dry. Okay. Yeah, it felt, as I was working with it, it felt, it feels good. You can tell you take care of your skin, but it did feel a little more on the dry side. So I didn't, and for that reason, I didn't set her all over. I lightly, lightly set the under eyes like I showed you, but I did not, um, I'm not actually setting the whole face because I don't think she needs it with um, skin that's a little bit more dry. You don't always need to set it. You'll just kind of suck the life out of it. So what I'm doing is I'm just going right in with this bronzing powder. Um, but you have to be very careful and use just a little bit if you don't set the skin because it's really going to grab onto it. So what I like to do with bronzer is I like to apply the powder and then I'll take my little makeup sponge and I'll just dab over it and that just applies a little bit of the foundation on top and it will just make it look like she's kind of naturally bronzed you can't see any lines and it blends it a little bit. And I have, so the skincare products I used on her today, I am doing a giveaway with them on my channel. I have a whole video on skin prep on all the products I use, what choices I use, who I choose to use what on in the order I do it and how to combat different skin types. So if you go to that video and you leave a comment on it, I will enter you into when I'm giving away four of Sonia Roselli's products. So these three I used today and then an additional one. They are really fantastic. So we'll be doing that giveaway tomorrow. We're going to be drawing a name. Okay, super pretty. So I just wanted, I wanted to bronze her a little bit just to add a little bit of color to her face. Put on a little bit more life since we put foundation on it. So now I'm just going to go in with this bronzing finishing powder. This is just going to add a little bit of a sheen. Oh my, I think my mom, there, there's a little bit of lag in the chat, but I think she just heard my comment of, <laughs> of the blush that we used. <laughs> she said she wanted to make a joke about the shade, but wanted to keep it a G-rated show. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> We're very G-rated on this channel. Maybe PG occasionally, but <laughs> keep it good. Okay. <laughs> So that's looking great. So I really want to play up her great skin texture. So I'm actually going to go back to the Hourglass palette and we are going to use some of these finishing powders. They have a sheen to them. They're very, very pretty. Um, what I love about people who have dry skin is they usually have a very smooth texture. So you can get away with using some shimmer, some finishing powders that have a sheen to them because the dry skin naturally has kind of a glow, especially after you exfoliate it, which is good. And another another perk to dry skin, I've noticed that people that have dry skin, they have very, very small pores, <laughs> so, which you do. Like yes. you're not, you have like nothing around your nose area, you're very lucky. So this is gorgeous. I'm just mixing this whole top row. These are finishing powders with a little bit of sheen. This one's more of a highlight, so I like to mix all three and just dust it on all the high points of the face. And that just totally, you can tell it makes her skin look so gorgeous and so glowy. That is very pretty. All right, so we're gonna do lips for her. I want to play up the tones in her blush, so I'm gonna choose like a rose tone on her. 
A cute Melinda. Okay, first I'm going to lip line this. So this is um, Sandstorm by NYX. So this one is more of a, a nude neutral. And then I'm going to apply a rose toned lipstick on top. So you don't have to match your lip liner with the lipstick? You do not, yeah. Oh, okay. So what I, I actually like to do different colors and then kind of pair the tones together. So this one's more of like a warm peachy. So what I'll do is I'll outline the lips and then I fill them in slightly just so you don't have like a line of liner and a line of lipstick. So as long as you do that, they don't have to match. A lot of companies that they'll sell like a matching liner to the lips stick mm -hmm. and it's nice if you want that exact exact color but I usually like to tweak it So if you guys have any questions, make sure you drop them now so that, because there's like a teeny bit of a lag, so I can see them. Sometimes after we log out, I will see the questions because they'll pop out and then I feel bad that I didn't get to them. Okay, we're going to use, um, let's use Cosmo on her. That's a very pretty sort of rose pink color. I'm going to mix a teeny bit of that with Velvet Teddy, I think. I'm going to go a little bit more mauve in her lips than I did on her cheeks, but I still want the colors to complement each other. Yeah, this is pretty. So if you guys are new to my channel, I love to do live makeovers. So we live stream them so you guys can see all the steps. And we go live Monday through Thursday. We're in California, so Pacific time. So we usually start around 10 a.m., between 10 and 10.15-ish. 10 so I'm just using a little brush, just giving her lips a nice shape. So where is everybody? I want to know where everyone is watching from. We've had people tune in from some fun places. Okay, so I'm just doing this in layers. I'm just getting a couple layers. So this will wear really well. I just want to ask people questions when I'm doing their lips because <laughs> it's quiet, but then she, <laughs> Melinda can't answer me because then she'd get a funny lip shape. Do you wear gloss, Melinda? Mm -hmm. You do? Okay. We're going to do a gloss on her today, too. I um, have been using these Buxom glosses, and I've been loving them, so we're going to try one on Melinda today. They're sort of a cream, a creamy gloss, so they have some tint to them. And they're sticky, but I feel like cream glosses aren't as bad as like a, a liquidy gloss that's just pure like tackiness on your lips. I don't mind that actually. I'm fine with like a really, really, really sticky gloss, but I think a lot of people don't love it. Are them close to me. Very pretty. All right, we're going to go ahead and put on some gloss. Okay, so we're going to use the Buxom in shade Blushing Margarita. This is gorgeous rose tone color. 
It almost, it's like identical to the lipstick I mixed for her, actually. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll just do like the center of the lips with it. You can do everywhere, but I, I like the fullness it gives if you do it just right in the middle. Gorgeous. <laughs> shaping right here. Okay. All right, Melinda. Let's flash her before video so you guys can see the full before and after and then we will show Melinda her finished look because she has not seen the eyes yet. <laughs> actually, look at me. I might want to add a little bit. I actually like that. Let me add like a teeny, teeny bit of shimmer under your eyes. I think that would be pretty. And then we will show you, you can kind of see in our, our main camera lens a little bit reflective, so she can, she's probably gotten a little bit of a sneak peek, but yeah. not the full, the full look. Okay, let's do this a little bit. Oh, hi. Oh my gosh, we have someone watching from Belgium. That's amazing. Nice. What time is it there? That's so crazy. Go ahead and look up for me. Thank you for watching. So this is just a really pretty gold. I'm just going to add a little bit of color under her eyes. She's just the prettiest blue eyes. And I'm going to add a pop of highlighter. Hi, Gigi. She says, I wish you could do my makeover. Well, if you are local, I can. So I'm in Southern California. Go ahead and look forward. Melinda was pretty close. She drove half hour, 40 minutes. Yeah, half hour. Today. So mm -hmm. not too bad. There wasn't any traffic. Ah, that's amazing. <laughs> there has not been Because I was going really. towards... Las Vegas, and I thought that it's only Wednesday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Yeah, if any of you live local and would like to be a model, um, reach out to me on social media, or you can email me. My email is in the description box. All right, Melinda, you ready to see? You? Yeah. To see in a mirror? Okay. Oh, wow. You look so pretty. I don't even look like myself. <laughs> you look very glam. Do yeah. you like the lashes? She's never worn lashes before. Yeah, they, it just looks different. Yeah, they make your so eyes different. look so blue. Wow. Gorgeous. Thank you for being my model. <laughs> oh, it was so nice you. to meet you. It was great to come. Oh, you're so sweet. And thank you for driving to see me. Yes. And thank you guys for watching. I'm so grateful to all of you that comment and watch my videos. And um, we will see you guys tomorrow for another tutorial. See ya. <laughs>